Welcome to the Self Girl Nerds Podcast. I'm your host, Marie, a courage coach, creative soul, and adventure seeker. Since through hiking the Pacific Crest Trail in 2019, I'm on a mission to help you embrace your most confident self so you can achieve your dreams too. If you're eager for deep conversations, big questions, and meaningful connections, join me on the quest to discovering how we can create a more magical and memorable life. Hello, nerds! How are you? I'm really good. I had a super fun week. Um, I went to dance for the first time, I think, since the pandemic. Other than at a wedding I went to recently, I mean, going out to dance, we went to, to see uh, Hallucination. So I don't know if you know them. They are formerly, they were formerly called a tribe called Red. Uh, so it's an indigenous group who make techno music. Not sure techno is the right word. I'm not a music geek. Um, but we danced like as if we were naked on the sand and it it was wild. I just was not self-conscious at all, just moving my body in all kinds of directions and it made a world of good. It was medicine. And then the next day I went to the movies. I used to love going to the cinema. I would go to the cinema like two or three times a week um, <laughs> before the pandemic. And I'd forgotten about how much fun it is. <laughs> we went to see my friends and I, the movie Bros. Uh, that was created by the directors of Bridesmaids. So it's super funny. It's a, basically it's a super entertaining rom-com, uh, but with a gay couple. So just your regular kind of like good feels from a rom-com, but with two guys um, that are super fun characters. And there's lots of references to like the modern life, what it's like to be on social media, what it's like to date nowadays, uh, what's it like to be addicted to your phone and to get ghosted and to like build a relationship through texting. So... It was super funny. I giggled the whole time. I cried tears of sadness and then tears of joy when they reunite. Because, you know, that's always the same narrative. But I love I love it. I love it. I love a good rom-com. Anyway, last week was not so good for me uh, because my grandma passed away uh, unexpectedly. She was, you know, she was getting old, but she was doing well. And then in the space of like five days, everything went down. So I decided to drop everything to cancel all of my calls and drive over there. It was a six hour drive there to and back. So 12 hours. And I managed to get there in the last moments of consciousness that she had. So that was a really special moment for me. And I'm glad I prioritized the love I have for my grandma rather than my work. It's not a decision that was easy. I'm ashamed to say. Um, but it's a decision I'm proud to have made. Um, on the drive, and on the drive, I listened to a few audiobooks, and that's what's inspired today's episode. So I, I listened to the book Polysecure about attachment styles and polyamory. This was super interesting. And also to the classic, which is The Big Leap by Gay Hendrix. So I don't know if you say Gay Hendrix or Guy Hendrix. Anyway, uh, The Big Leap is about our upper limiting beliefs. So the beliefs we hold on to unconsciously that stop us from achieving our wildest dreams. Um, one concept that he touches on is our zone of genius and how he is committed to building a life in his zone of genius. And that reminded me of how I committed to this as well when I came back from the Pacific Crest Trail in 2019. So I'm going to tell you more about what your zone of genius is, what that means. But first, I just want to rewind back to 2019 when I came back from my through hike 
and I tried going back to work as a graphic designer. There was so much resistance in me, like a toddler screaming, no, I don't want to, and kicking their little legs and pulling your hair and stuff like that. That's how I felt about going back to work. And I was told, and I tried to remind myself, well, that's just how life is. You know, you can't be having fun all the time. You you got to sit down and you got to work. And But there was something didn't sit right with me, with the Peter Pan-esque slash Mary Poppins part of me. This way of thinking, this didn't align with the world I wanted to live in. So I figured that's not what I want for myself. That's not what I want for my children or not necessarily my children. That's not what I want for anyone. This like feeling of, ugh, I have to, I have to do this. I have to spend five days a week just getting shit done without any passion. So I figured, um, okay, how do I bring back the alignment I experience on the trail? How do I bring that to my real life? Because once you've tasted the sweetness of pure alignment, everything else feels like being forced into a tight box. And I don't want anyone to be living their life feeling like they're trapped into a tight box. So I went to work like a scientist and decided to figure out how to bring that experience, those feelings I uh, was filled with on the trail back home with me. And this is to me what Guy Hendricks means when he says living in your zone of genius. This is when you love what you do. You feel an effortless ease and a natural flow between you and the work, between you and the world. You feel like you're exactly where you need to be doing exactly what you're meant to be doing. You know those moments when time flies by without you noticing that that is what I'm talking about. Now, I want you to ask yourself how much of your days, how much of your weeks are spent in your zone of genius? Is it something like 5%? Is it something like 15%? Or more in the 60, 70%? Versus the other three zones. So I'm going to describe the other three zones. First, there's the zone of incompetence. That's pretty self-explanatory. That's what makes your brain hurt real bad. So for me, that's math, that's bookkeeping, (laughs) everything to do with numbers. That's my zone of incompetence. That's where, you know, you need a lot of help and ideally you want to hire someone to help you out. (laughs) Um, Then there's the zone of competence. The zone of competence is The stuff that you're good at, but someone could do just as well as you. For example, um, washing the dishes is probably in everyone's zone of competence. Raking leaves is another example that comes to mind because I'm looking outside the window and there's a bunch of leaves falling from the trees. Um, That kind of things. I mean, many people spend their whole week doing a job in their zone of competence and feeling a sense of meaninglessness because they think anyone could replace me right now and it wouldn't make any difference. Um, Then, so there's the zone of incompetence, then there's the zone of competence, and then we step in the zone of excellence. So your zone of excellence is what you're super talented in, but not necessarily in love with. That was graphic design for me. I could have kept building a successful career, but my heart was not there. I knew I could do a really good job doing what the client wanted, but it didn't turn me on like having a coaching business does. So let's see. What is in your unique zone of genius? Think back to when you were a child or a teenager and you had some free time? Where did your curiosity take you naturally when you were bored? 
Personally, I remember reading for hours. I remember writing a bunch of stories and drawing pictures to go along with them, so like comic books. I also remember recording radio shows with my friends in my bedroom. Um, I remember creating, uh, loving the projects at school where you were free to uh, create visuals. So, for example, if you had like a presentation to make, I'd get really excited about uh, creating visuals to go along with that. So if you're not sure, ask your parents or ask your caregivers. My my mom also told me that I would make my Playmobiles have, like they would sit together, two Playmobiles, and have long conversations about their feelings. <laughs> now, fast forward to today, I found ways to integrate what lights me up in my business. So everything that is fun to me, that comes naturally to me, that and that has always been the case. When I look back to my childhood and I compare with now, I've intentionally created uh, a business in which we find so many similitudes. I'm not sure if that's a word. Um, for example, I have deep conversations with my clients for a living. So now it's not my Playmobiles talking anymore, it's me talking with my clients. I also read a lot for work to become a better, a more skilled coach. I also get to record this podcast every week um, to express myself and to help hundreds of folks be their bravest self. I create content to teach my clients both written but also super visual. I create videos, I create illustrations, I write stories to teach, to inspire. Um, and the result of that is that work does not feel so much like work. It feels more like play. Sometimes when I go on holiday, I look forward to coming home so I can start creating again. That's what it's like to work in your zone of genius. Of course, it's not always roses. I mean, there are tasks that I don't like as much, but most of my days are spent in my zone of genius, with, which brings so much lightheartedness and makes me feel connected to a deeper part of me, a core part of me. Uh, so think back to when you were a child, what you did with your time, but also Think about what you, uh, for example, love helping your friends with. I know that uh, before I became a coach, I loved when, when my friends asked me about what they should do and they said like, oh, there's this project I have in mind, this idea I have in mind, but you know, I'm not sure it's going to work. I was always the one, and I still am, uh, who goes, yes, yes, go for it. Like, trust yourself. You can do this ask uh, for a raise, uh, try it out, put yourself out there. The worst thing that's going to happen is it's not going to work. You're going to stand up again and it's go for it. Go do that through hike, whatever it is. I was always that friend and loved helping them believe in themselves. Um, so that's another way to get curious about what what's in your zone of genius. Now, this might seem unrealistic, for many of you, too good to be true, but I want you to consider that it is possible for you too. And that is what we want to help you develop in the Sapling Side Business Starter coaching program that I created with my friend Allison. So I don't know if you listened to last week's episode where Allison and I had a conversation about our Business, business journeys and about this program that we're launching in November, um, this is the, the whole point is we don't want you to leave everything behind to start a business. That's like a shock to the system. That's a romantic idea that we see in the movies. I agree with you. This is too much. This is unrealistic. Or I mean, some people have done it and it's worked well for them. Great. That's great. But in most cases, 
we want to look at this in a sustainable way. We want to make a steady transition. So if you're like me thinking like, I want to taste the sweetness of pure alignment. I want to live in my zone of genius. Okay, let, then let's figure out how you can slowly but surely make that transition. And the way we want to help you do that is by helping you start your own first side business that works well in your schedule and adds a bit of spark in your day to day. This is perfect for those of you who are at a point in their career where every week kind of seems like it merges into the next and you might do like I used to do and hide in the restrooms to scroll Instagram and feel a mix of envy and bitterness at other people's enthusiasm. It's a pretty good sign that you are due to reconnect with your enthusiasm and that's what we want to help you do. Um, enthusiasm, that the word, means a connection to something bigger than yourself. And that's exactly how Allison and I view entrepreneurship. To us, business, creating a business is about creating a way to make an impact so that you can feel more alive, so that you can feel connected to the world and increase the meaningfulness in your life. And when your life feels meaningful, everything becomes so much easier. It's so much easier to get up in the morning and to be motivated to, to do hard things when you know why you're doing them and y y you really fucking care about the reason. Now, the applications for the Sapling Side Business Starter are going to open next Monday on October 17th. In the meantime, get on the wait list so you can receive more information um, and start thinking about your ideas. I know you have a bunch of ideas when you lie in your bed at night, uh, but then in the morning you probably wake up and think, oh, they're unrealistic, they're not that good, or they're too complicated to pull off. And you just numb, numb yourself. You put, you put the ideas aside because you don't know where you'd start. You worry that you wouldn't have the energy to keep working on them in the evening. You don't want to risk your financial stability. And all of that just makes you want to go, oh, never mind, never mind, never mind. But the, the ideas always come back in your desire for more freedom and for the fire in you to burn again is never gonna go away so you might as well take this seriously and like I said we're not gonna tell you okay leave your job and jump in and risk everything. No, that's not what we are all about. Both Alison and I transitioned slowly and steadily from careers in she was an engineer, I was a graphic designer, and we only left those jobs when we were certain that we were going to be okay financially in our businesses. So we're not about making big jumps, but we're about making about starting sooner rather than later in a sustainable way. And that's what we're going to teach and that's what we're going to guide you to do in the Sapling Side Business Starter. It's a four-month coaching program. Um, there's going to be 25 seats. And by the end, by the time you finish, not only will you have a side business that's launched and that's that you have momentum to keep going and a plan to move forward. You will also feel so much more purposeful. Uh, you'll have something worthwhile to work on instead of spending your lunch hour doing small talk or listening to the person at work that's been telling you about their kitchen renovations that you couldn't care less about. You will also have reclaimed your voice. Be proud to show up at family gatherings to meet new people and to tell them about what you're working on instead of feeling like your life is like a boring groundhog day. 
And you will also have simplified your life because when you have a mission to focus on with a clear goal, then you get to channel all of your energy there and you know exactly what to do in your free time. That's much richer than just watching another next Netflix show that's not going to uh, bring any results in your life. And don't get me wrong, I love to watch Netflix, but... <laughs> I I cannot understand when people tell me, oh, you know, I watched this whole series and I and I asked them, was it good? And they're like, no, oh, it was okay. So you're telling me you spent, I don't know, 12 hours watching an average, a below average series when you could have used this time to figure out how to step closer to your zone of genius. We want to make sure we're our future self's best friend. Like, what do we want to be able to do in a few years? And how do I start preparing for that now? If you want to be able to have more flexibility, if you want to be able to leave your job with ease in a few years so that you can travel more often, so that you can go on hikes other than the then on the weekends, um, then you've got to to start thinking about your strategy now. So that's why we want to offer the Sapling Side Business Starter. And I hope I get to meet you in that group. So get on the wait list now at shedreamsofalpine.com slash starter. And you'll get notified as soon as applications open on October 17. Again, the link is shedreamsofalpine.com slash starter. Okay, have a beautiful week and oh, I have a thought experiment for you guys this week. Think, start wondering about how you could translate your childlike passions and adventures into grown-up ones. There's no right or wrong answers. The most innovative ideas always come when we allow ourselves a bit of madness. So the sillier, the better. Don't tell yourself like, oh, no, I I don't know. I don't know. It's unrealistic. Just come up with funny ideas. Go wild. And you might be surprised what comes from there. Okay, that's it for now. Bye-bye. You just listened to the self Girl Nerds podcast. Make sure to subscribe and to find me on Instagram at self Girl Nerds. If you want individual help developing the confidence to create a more meaningful and exciting life, visit selfgirlnerds.com today to learn how. Finally, I want to thank my friend Etienne Galano for editing this. And I want to thank you, kind-hearted souls, for growing into your truest, most courageous selves every day and making this world a better, more beautiful place. My name is Marie, and I will talk to you next week.